We've had a brief look at the control bar at the beginning, let's look at everything in detail now. And let's see how we can also customize it. Now let's start with the LCD display, which is this dark blue area in the center. When you create a new project, it will automatically load this basic version. That displays the position of the playhead in bars and bits. You also get tempo, time signature and key signature. If you click on this little R here, you can see a list of options to customize the control bar and LCD. Another way to enter these settings is to click anywhere on an empty area on the control bar, right click, and then simply go to customize control bar and display. So we get four lists here. Views has to do with these options up here. Unchecking them will remove them from the control bar and checking them will put them back. The transport list will add buttons to the, to the transport buttons. The modes and functions, as you can guess, adds more modes to this area right here, more on this later, and the LCD screen will customize our LCD screen. Now let's continue with that. As you can see, it is currently grayed out and we can't make any changes. That is because we have different types of LCD. Here you can see the current mode. We have bits and project, then bits and project large, bits and time, the large version of bits and time, just bits, and just type. And the last one actually let me access it from here, or from here, click the arrow and go to custom, is the one that is the most detailed one and the one that enables all the customization options. And I would suggest that you mostly use custom mode. As you can see, if we go back here, we can now customize it and just put anything we want. Sample rate and conversion, it will add our sample rate and punch locators. If I click it, if I deselect it, it will take it off. Let's take off, for example, time signature and division, or key signature. Now let's have a look at what we have. Here we have the Simti time code. It displays where our playhead is in relation to that. We get hours, minutes, seconds and frames. And we can either hold and scroll, or we can simply double click and type it. Underneath that we have bars. Uh, bits and bars and subdivisions. Same deal here, you either hold and drag and scroll or you can simply type it in. Now when you type in these fields, to move to the next option you simply press the space bar. For example, let's say that I want to place my playhead on bar 5, bit 3 and I don't know, fourth, the 4th 16th note. So I double click and I press 5, press space to go to the next option, then type 3, 4 bar 3, space again, and then 4, and then press enter. And as you can see, it will snap to what I have typed up here. Now the next uh, field has to do with the locators. We have looked at what that is in the cycle and loops video. When we enable cycle, remember important Shortcut C, as in Charlie. The right and left edges are called the locators. So here we can set the range. The top row is for the right locator and the bottom row is for the left locator. And we can set them by bars, bits, division, which is currently set to 16 by default, and ticks. Now, same as with the SIMT, you can also type and press space to go to the next field. If you take one of the locators and scroll until you pass the position of the other locator, then it will enable swap left and right locators mode. So let's try that. And right now, if I press playback from here, this area will be skipped. Good. Next, we have tempo and the different kinds of tempo, more on that later. Time signature, division, MIDI in and out, and CPU usage. 
Now when you click on this arrow to bring up the options for the LCD screen, you can also have a giant bits display and a giant type display. Let's open both. So I can grab them, resize them, oh, come on, make them as big as I want. These are actually quite helpful when you have two screens. And of course I can use them to move my playhead. Same with time. Now let's have a look at the transport patterns. Let me close this one up and go over each and every transport pattern. So I'm going to click to an empty area, click on customize, control and part display and let's turn everything on. Great, from the beginning. The first one we already know, it's the go to the beginning button. Remember, important shortcut, enter. I can simply press enter and it will go to the beginning. The next one is quite helpful. It is the go to position button, important shortcut, slash. So when I click on this one, I'm going to press cancel to use the shortcut or press slash. It will bring up this window. Now, uh, as with the SIMT, again, you can just type it, press space, and then press enter. So for example, uh, let's say bar six, press enter, let's say four and three, and then enter, it will snap to that. Of course, this button is not needed if you have the SIMT on, because you can simply just type it here. If you don't have that, then yes, this button is quite helpful. Uh, next, we have the go to left locator or go to the right locator buttons. By clicking on these, so let's use cycle here, our playhead will be positioned to either the left or the right locator. So left or right. And as you can see, cycle doesn't even have to be on. It will still snap to that. Next is the go to the selection part. I can select any clip that I want and press this button and it will take me to the beginning of that. So if I click on that one, and I click here, it will take me to the beginning of that region. Now next is the play button with a bar in front of it. That is the play from the beginning button. If I press it, playback will start from the beginning. Again, you can use the keyboard shortcuts, which is you know much faster. Simply press enter and space, you can do the same thing. Next is play from left window edge. If I'm zoomed in, or pressing the or at the beginning of the project and it's not visible so let's go here when i press this button playback will start from the leftmost visible project on my tracks area so remember my playhead is here so i'm going to move here and then press this one it will start from the first visible area Right, let's go to the beginning, remember, press enter. Now the next two will start playback either from the left or right locator. So if I press this one, it will start from bar 11. And if I press this one, it will start from bar 17. Next one is play from selection. If I choose any clip here, let's, let's use this one, if I click on that, it will start from the beginning of that, which is bar 17. If I select this one and then click on that, it will start from that one. Next two, forwards and backwards, remember important shortcuts, comma and full stop. Then we get the go to the beginning button, which is when I press play, it's also the stop button. Then I get the play button spacebar and then I get the pause button. Now, if you remember from the cycle video, when cycle is on, no matter where I put my playhead, it will start from the beginning of the cycle each time I press enter. And the way to disable that is right click on the play button and then play from cycle. So right now it will keep playing from where I pause. Let's go back. So now it starts from the beginning again. Now, if I use pause, it will ignore that. So you can press play, 
press pause, it stops here, and then when I press it again, it continues from where I paused. Quite helpful. Uh, the next one is the record button, which starts recording. More on that on the recording options we get because we get recording video because we get more options here. And next to that, we have the capture recording. This is a time saver. Uh, let's say you are messing around with your MIDI keyboard and you play something great, but you did not record it. You can simply press this button and it will produce a region with what you played. Now let's have a look at that. I'm going to, I already have a piano here. So let's click on that, remove the cycle, bring up the musical keyboard. Remember, Command and K, important shortcut, as in Kilo. And without pressing record, let me press a few keys. Great, let's say that I love that, but I haven't pressed record to keep this legendary performance. So all I have to do is either click on that or important shortcut, Shift and R, as in Romeo. And there you can see, here it is. It produces a region with that, and it will always start from where you will place it where my playhead is. Now let me close that. Lastly, if you like the control bar the way you have set it up, you can save it as the default. So click on this little arrow, and then go down here and press on Save as Defaults. And then every time you create a new project, the control bar and LCD will be exactly as you have set it up. If you want to go back to the original mode, you can simply go to Apply Defaults.